purpose of this video series is to provide students with a resource that will serve as both a syllabus and a guide to the performance of technique. Great care has been taken during its production to make it suitable for use with Nagamine Shoshin Sensei's book, The Essence of Okinawan Karate Do. Together they form a comprehensive guide to his Matsubai Shiryu School of Karate. While it springs from the teachings of Chotoku Kyan, Choki Motobu, and other karate masters, the Matsubashi system is unique. Highly developed, precise, and exacting, it is the founder's distillation of the unique unarmed fighting art of his nation, polished and perfected by a lifetime of hard training and scholarly research. It is an art that offers a practical method of self-defense, combined with a philosophical approach to self-improvement and self-mastery. A blending of extreme physical training with the contemplative discipline of Zen Buddhism. The body working in harmony with the intellect for the benefit of both. Shoshin Nagamine was recognized at an early age as a uniquely talented karate exponent. This resulted in his inclusion by the governor of Okinawa in an elite group of very senior karate instructors charged with the responsibility of developing new basic kata for young, entry-level students. With Choju Miyagi, the founder of Goju Ryu Karate, and at the direction of General Hayakawa, Shoshin Nagamine developed two new kata in the early 1940s. Fukugata, or demonstration kata, numbers one and two. These kata are retained in both the Matsubayashi and Goju-ryu systems. The founder of Matsubashi Ryu, my father Shoshi Nagamine, made this kata in 1941 as a demonstration or promotional kata for elementary students at the direction of the then governor of Okinawa, General Hayakawa. With the assistance of Makishi Sensei and Taira Sensei, I am going to demonstrate the most basic applications of the kata.
This can be done with almost any number of people, but to make it easy to understand, we will use just three. In this way, it will be very easy to see everything clearly. So let's get started. Fukugatechi, begin. Next, we will examine how the bunkai are applied as oyo waza in fukyukataichi. I will explain as simply as possible the block punch technique as used in the kata. This is alright in training, but in an actual fight, you would augment the technique with your other hand, in this case your left. The block, although used for blocking the leg in the kata, can just as easily be used as an attack to the body. This is just the kata application. When used to attack the opponent, the fist should be twisted sharply on contact to direct the power of the strike into your opponent's abdomen. It's easy to make mistakes in Fukugata, in all kata in fact, so be careful. It's very important when you block to twist your arm like this as you make contact. This will help you develop strong acceleration, which in turn creates snap to transfer your energy to the target. Fukukata Ni was created in 1941 by Choju Miyagi Sensei. In Goju Liu, the style founded by Miyagi Sensei, it is called Gekisai No. 1. Several years ago, when we had a major sports event in Okinawa, a demonstration of this kata was performed by more than 1,500 karate black belts.
ただいまより旧型美の型を行いたいと思います。As I said, this kata was created by Chojun Miyagi Sensei, the founder of Goju Ryu in 1941. From the two Geki Sai kata he invented, we in Matsubai Shishonin Yu adopted the first as our Fukugata number two. This was to record and show respect for the great achievements of Chojun Miyagi Sensei and his creation of the Go Judo School. Just imagine more than 1500 Dan grades performing this kata together. That shows you just how important it is. There are some common mistakes in Fukugata Ni that I would like to mention. Here, for example, many people don't use their hips here, and you must. We refer to hip twisting and hip shifting by the term koshi in the martial arts. It's very important to use both sides of your body as you move and perform techniques. This creates acceleration to produce power, balance and a stable platform for techniques, as well as speed. This, when combined with hip movement, will create acceleration and therefore power. Also, crossing the hands in front of the body as you move and perform techniques creates a defensive shield.
There are often differences between the fundamental bunkai, as we have shown you here, and practical applications. For example, in the basic bunkai, I just block his hand like this. In reality, the block would be followed by a foot sweep and attack to the throat. However, this practical application is difficult to connect with the next part of the cutter sequence, which is why the basic bunkai and practical bunkai are different. It is commonly accepted that Anko Etoso developed the five pin Ankata around 1907 for use in the Okinawan school system. What is not clear is whether these were drawn from indigenous Okinawan sources or whether he simply reworked an older Chinese kata called Chanan. According to Choki Motobu, Itosu Anko's Pinan kata are almost the same as the Chanan he knew. When he mentioned this to their author, Itosu Sensei told him, Yes, the kata is slightly different. The students all told me that the name Pinan is better, so I went along with the opinions of the young people. There are five Pinan Kata, and they are believed to have been originated around 1908 by Yasutsuni Itosu Sensei. You have to understand that the movements in the Kata are separate and unconnected.
In the early part of the Pinnan Shodan Bunkai, there are several tricky areas where it is easy to make mistakes. It's important to remember that whether one side is in Zenkutsudachi and the other side is in natural stance, they have to achieve a degree of balance. Are both in natural stance is just the same. They have to be coordinated one with the other. The Pinnan Kata all have unique and interesting stances. From Pinnan Shodan to Pinnan Godan, each has some special feature that must be studied. For example, Kosadachi, in which you twist 45 degrees with your feet together. Don't open your legs, keep them closed tight. It is applied like this. In the kata, I block his hand like this. In reality, however, I would attack the joint to maximize the effect of the blow like this. Those who believe the Pinnan are Chinese in origin, having been developed from a Chinese zing or kata called Chanan, fall into several camps. Proponents of one claim that Ankoi Tosu learned a kata of this name from a Chinese sailor shipwrecked on Okinawa and from it developed the five Pinnan. Another view is that he learned the kata from a man called Annan or perhaps a man from a place of that name. Others say the Chinese boxer was called Chan'an, and Itosu named the kata he created after the source from which they sprang. Whatever their origin, they are common to many styles and are probably the most practiced of all the kata. This is the Tetsui block, which is found in the cutter. The technique is applied with a strong snapping twisting action to the opponent's arm. The snap makes it more effective. Attacking the joints in this way creates the greatest effect. A strike to this area, for example, causes tremendous pain.
To make the Pinnan debate even more interesting, Chōki Motobu's karate as taught by his son Chōsei contains a kata now referred to as Shiraguma, which was originally called Channan, and which is similar, although not identical, to the Pinnan. Most strikes in karate are straight, but in Pinan Sandan, these punches rise as they are performed to produce a cutting effect on the opponent's arms. These techniques are very painful and characteristic of the Pinan Kata Sandan. Look at this. The curved punch from Pinan Sandan don't raise your elbow when you punch or twist your arm like this when you punch. This is completely wrong. Just imagine for a moment that the palm of his hand is actually his face. Strike like this, not wide, or you will miss. Your hand must follow a curved path to the target, rather like a satellite travelling in an orbit around your body. Pinnan Kata did not immediately win the support of the karate community. Even Itosu Sensei did not teach the fourth and fifth Pinnan Kata with great relish, and noted instructor Ken Suyabu is reported as saying, if you have time to practice the Pinnan Kata, practice Kushanku instead. Nonetheless, they provided and continue to provide beginners with an introduction to karate.
I would like to explain several points of the Pinan Yondan Kata that cause confusion. In the case of Ukezuki, it looks as if it is straight, but this is not the case. Actually, the arm twists slightly as the technique is performed. Not as much as this, this is completely wrong. Do it like this. Now let's look at the block. When you perform morote uke, double fisted block, raising the hands is completely wrong. The hands need to be kept at shoulder level, not raised. Then the technique that follows performed downwards with a feeling of pushing from the inside outwards. Not just pushing downwards like this, but with a feeling of pushing outwards. In the case of Pinan Yondan, there is a technique that looks like a simultaneous block with both hands. This is wrong. Actually, it's like this, a block followed by a strike. So when you perform the kata, think of it as two techniques, even though it looks like one. So let's look at the application. Not like this, like this. but thinking of the technique like this.
I would like to explain a little about Pinan Godan. So, block, punch. When you punch, you have to extend the technique so that it hits hard and snaps back, like a ball hitting a wall. This sort of punch is typical in Matsubai Shiryu. This is no good. Bad technique. The technique is stopped short instead of being extended. This is how you do it. Block and punch, snap back. Next. Blocking. A long time ago, they used to do it like this, which is a mistake. This is wrong. Not like this. Rather like this, from up to down. In the case of Pinan Godan, remember that your techniques must have snap. Your punches especially must be extended so they hit the target and appear to bounce back. Applying snap to your techniques makes them more powerful. Snap your technique when you attack for maximum effect especially if you target a joint. In Pinan Godan, we have this technique. Like this, then counter attack. This is what we call a reverse technique. reverse technique. This is like a scissor block. This technique in Penan Yondan is related to the block in Penan Godan. So, blocking, not like this. twisting, twisting like this. In the case of blocks, this one, there is too much space. This needs to be down here. See, too far out and the attack completely penetrates. You have to position your body and your fist correctly so you can block effectively. 
People wonder why we always put the left hand over the right. For example, in Pasai, Okan, always the left hand over the right. The reason we cover the right hand with the left is because for most people, the right hand is strongest. So we protect the strong right hand by covering it with the weak left hand. We cover the right with the left, so when we need to act, the right is ready. So we are finished with the Pinan Kata. The Kata Naihanshi will always be identified with Karate Master Chalky Motobu. Many of the photos of him that remain show him either performing or teaching his signature kata, which he viewed as a complete training resource for beginners and advanced students that predated the Pinan Kata by a wide margin. Naihanshi teaches the use of the lower body as a platform for rapid, powerful, offensive techniques delivered at extremely short range. As Shoshin Nagamine, the founder of Matsubai Shiryu, studied with Motobu Sensei in 1936 at his Hongo Daimachi Dojo in Tokyo, we can safely assume that this version is very close to his original teachings. In the case of Naihanchi, the stance is like this. This is Shikodachi, one, two, three. In Shikodachi, the toes point outwards like this. In Naihanchi Dachi, they are straight forwards, so it looks like you are on horseback. You can check that your stance is correct by doing this.
전산지입니다. In the case of Naihanchi, you can imagine that its movements are like a series of waves going backwards and forwards, side to side. Remember that you must start and finish the kata in the same place. In other words, your starting and ending points are identical. When Shoshin Nagamine was born in 1907, karate was still a uniquely Okinawan art, concerned primarily with rapid and effective self-defense. As the 20th century unfolded, it gradually spread to mainland Japan and beyond, becoming as it did so an art of peace rather than an art of war. Karate Do, a path to self-improvement and spiritual enlightenment, rather than karate jutsu, a rugged, indeed brutal, method of self-defense. With Gichin Funakoshi K-1, 
Kenmoma Buni and Chojun Miyagi, Shoshin Nagamine was in the vanguard of this movement. His book was one of karate's first technical volumes and has served many tens of thousands of students as an infallible guide since it was first published in 1976. His introduction of the study of Zen for karate students emphasized his belief that karate had evolved beyond its origins to become a thing of both the mind and body for people of all nations, creeds and beliefs. Shoshin Nagamine achieved much. The formulation of a discrete style of karate, the preservation of important segments of the art's history, and the unselfish dissemination of what was once the closely guarded secret of Okinawan karate. Upon the foundation he built, others have followed to continue his work. The core of the system is, as ever, the dissemination of correct, effective technique through the study of basics, kata and yaksoku kumite, a subject that will be covered in the next video of this series. The Dragon Associates website features everything from fast-breaking news to a martial arts store, information on the latest videos to back issues of Dragon Times and Fighting Arts magazine. For information you can depend on from the best instructors and martial arts writers in the world, visit us on the World Wide Web at www.dragon-tsunami.org. Dragon Associates since 1968. Tsunami martial arts videos are recognized worldwide as the very finest of their kind. Tsunami's dedicated production team has captured, in their most perfect form, the classical schools of karate. In doing so, they have produced a historical resource of enormous value to this and future generations. The best instructors, the best photography and sound, the best writing and research. Tsunami, the best martial arts videos in the world.